another song that comes to my mind and it says, Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. All along this pilgrim journey, I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I, 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 I like it when somebody says, Would you come over and go with me to dinner or lunch or whatever? I want Jesus. Hey. 
I wanted to hatch. Uh -huh. I know hatch is not the word, but that's okay. Uh -huh. Go ahead. He said, I want this egg to hatch. Uh -huh. Because, and I'm going to name this one Mona. Because after she has had a certain amount of experience in her life, I'm going to send her from Trinidad to Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Now she doesn't know this when she's two years old. But she goes through all kinds of tribulations and trials from the time she's born until the time she is here now. And all of the things that she went through uh, serve to help her walk with purpose. Yeah. She didn't know why she had to go through what she had to go through. And neither do you. You don't know why you have gone through what you have gone through. And while you were going through, you didn't know why the name of goodness you were going through. <laughs> and you thought at times that God may have forgotten about you. If you are anything like Grace Catherine, that's me, then you probably said to the Lord sometimes, Lord, I live at 704 Northeast Breckenridge Street. Would you please come by here? <laughs> That's where I used to live. And uh, Lord, I know you know where I live, but I just want to remind you that I'm waiting on you. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Because it's like I need you right now. Yes, yes. <laughs> I know you said you would be with me, but I can't see you. And I don't feel you. So I just have to talk to you in faith and say, come by here, good Lord. Come by here. <laughs> Somebody needs you, Lord. Come by here. Some of you are living what we call window shoppers' lives, and you just don't know what you're doing, and you're just out for the ride. <laughs> and you look at this and you think, I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that. <laughs> and the Lord says, No, you're not getting none of that. <laughs> and you say, Well, why? Everybody else has been doing this.
the sky somewhere in the booming voice, Grace Catherine, you are to be I did. I told him that's what it feels to me. But that, listen, his voice is crying. I'm crying. Ministers are crying. Amen. All over the city. His voice is crying. What's he crying? And the, the man of wisdom shall see thy name. Uh -huh. Hear ye the rod, and who hath appointed it? Hear the rod. Now I told you that it was God that sent that devil back to you. Who? <laughs> the rod and who appointed it? Who caused you to fall in that ditch? God said, devil, she won't listen. He won't listen. So just let her keep on dealing and fall into the ditch. And let the rod smite her or him. And then they'll maybe wake up to the fact that I'm right there. Oh, Jesus. So. Are there yet the treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked? Oh, God. Treasures of wickedness in the house of the wicked. We're not reading no more of that. <laughs> we don't get on another subject altogether. There are treasures in the house of the wicked. And you don't realize some of the things that you have in your home are wicked. And you need to get them out. Don't ask me right now. This is a message. Not a lesson. What is a lesson to you? But there are things that you need to get out of your house. And there are, are, are spirits that are carried by some of the things that you bring in your house. That's why I tell people, some things I don't want in my house. I don't want them there. You say, well, what are they? I'll tell you later. But anyhow, there are a lot of things you bring in your house, treasures, you think they are. But they're wicked. So get them out of your house. And not only get them out of your house, get them out of this house. That's See, because you can get things in your house I mean, out of your house, and they're not out of this house, right. out of your body. Right. And so you're still thinking about it. It's still on your mind. It still keeps coming to you. Yeah. And as long as it's coming to you, the adversary, as long as the adversary thinks he has had a chance to give it to you, he's going to offer it to you. If, you. if you're a drinker and somebody offers you, if you have been a drinker, rather, and you've decided to quit, and somebody offers you a drink, and you say, no thanks, and it doesn't bother you, then you're no doubt free. Mm -hmm. But if they offer you a drink, and you say, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what is it? Is it scotch or is it? <laughs> <laughs> you start asking questions. <laughs> that means you're not delivered. <laughs>
said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now, <laughs> many of our hearts are troubled. You know, when things, certain things come, your heart starts palpitating. Yes. Right? So, what, what does the doctor tell you? Breathe in a paper bag. Okay, breathe in a paper bag. It will help. But what does it really do? What do you really have to do? You got to get your mind off of it. Whatever it is that's got you trouble. When you get your mind off of it, then the heart can kind of... Somebody, you know, just say, breathe. Just take a breath. Take another breath. Take another breath. And that heart will start slowing down. As a matter of fact, if you have heart palpitations, the doctors will tell you, you can go on a regimen. If you even have high blood pressure, you can go on a regimen of breathing slowly, and it will reduce not only your heart rate, but it will reduce the high blood the pressure that your heart is, right, whatever it's doing. Oh my God. This is a prescription I'm trying to give you when you walk with purpose. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. Fear has torment. So when you are fearful, there's something wrong. Either you're not trusting in the Lord, or you're trying to get away with something. That's right. I trust. I trust. Yes. That it's not the lack. I trust that you're completely reliant on the Father. Yeah. And knowing that He's with you. So there's no reason for you to be afraid because He's with you. Yeah. I tell the story so often. We were in Sunday school class. Had the uh, uh, teacher asked what did he learn in Sunday school? And they were talking about the disciples in the boat. And he says, I learned that Jesus said, how come y'all scared? They're not with you. <laughs> so why are you afraid if you're walking with him? So heart palpitations can be alleviated just by the knowledge that God. Why do you think people hold folks' hand when they're in trouble or going to the doctor or going to get a shot or all that kind of stuff? Somebody's there holding their hand. Why, why are they doing that? They're calming them down. That's right. Calming them down. So when Jesus is with you, he says, let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. If you know he's there, how come y'all scared? <laughs>
and what else? And you feel good. Uh, it's probably because you got in his presence. Because he said in his presence is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. In his presence. If you walk with God, some of these ailments that we have will be alleviated. I, I know that's true. I know that. I don't know what to tell you all that. But God can help me get rid of. And I say, oh my God, when did that leave? And left when I realized he was right there. I, you know, I, I used to have some attitude so that I could not walk. I had to, I had to just lay down. And I remember so well, <laughs> my son that's gone on with the Lord, Archie, said to me one time, he said, Mom, you, you was at home and you were just, you know, you couldn't walk, but you got in the pulpit and you're just walking all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to think, well, that's the truth, isn't it? <laughs> I was in the presence of the Lord all right. when I was ministering. Yeah. And when I got home, Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't talk about that. But I found out in his presence is fullness. Hallelujah. And his right hand is left. So you've got to get joy wherever you are. Yeah. That's right. In, in the midst of confusion, you've got to let God be right there. Choose life. I, now, why would he say choose life? 
if it were not in your purview to choose it. He said, choose life. Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? I'm talking about prescription for health. You can choose life. Let me just give you this one other illustration. I'm, I'm sure I'm trying to wind up. Listen, when I was back in Ohio, I've told you this story many times. Back in Ohio, I used to get a migraine headache every Sunday morning. Every Sunday morning. And the head would hurt so until it would just, I would feel it coming on. I'd press my head against the headboard. I'd try to stop it before I got up. But then as I, the day grew, I would get nauseous and my eyes would almost blank out. And I, I was just sick. But every Sunday. And so, one morning, my husband said to me, he said, well, I think you don't have to have any headaches. And I'll tell you the truth, it kind of made me mad. <laughs> I'm saying, I didn't act bad, but in my spirit, I'm thinking, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Do you think I'm having these things on purpose? Huh. <laughs> uh -huh. And so, he said, well, you don't have to have them. I said, okay. He said, let me pray for you. And Elder yes. Kelly prayed for me. Yes. From that day till this, that's been over 50 years ago, because I was almost married to the second one for 50 years, so it's a bunch of years ago. Um, from that day to this, Elder, I haven't had another migraine. Praise God. Lord. Yeah, Yeah. <laughs> 